Hey everyone, Dan from On One here. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about HDR and HDR workflow. One of the great things about Photo Raw is that the HDR function lives right inside of the application, right where your photos live, where all your raw processing lives, and everything else that you do. It means that creating an HDR and using it through your workflow is a seamless process. And now with 2019, you can actually use HDR and layers together. It's really cool. You can actually have multiple versions of the same raw photo using different HDR interpretations. Let me show you how it works. So here we go. I've got a bunch of photos I shot at the beach. I want to build a quick HDR from them. You can see that this frame is a little too bright and I've blown out the sun. And I have a series of photos next to them where I have all those details. So I'm just going to grab that whole series that I want from here to here. I'm just going to grab these four photos and I'll click on the HDR button. When the HDR dialog comes up, you notice that it has selected my zero exposure, my zero EV value, the middle bracket, as both my exposure and deghosting photo. I actually want to pick my longest in this case for both. That'll give me the smoothest water and will give me a brighter base exposure as well. There we go. Now, over here in the tone pane, I'm going to make a few adjustments just to tune this photo to my taste to get me started with. I want to make sure I've got all that detail up there in the sun. So I'm going to back my exposure and my highlights off just a little bit. And I'm going to bring the mid-tones and the shadows up a bit so that I can recover more of that foreground. So there we go. That kind of gives me a good happy middle ground. Not that it's going to be my finished photo, but it's a great place to start. I'll just hit the Save button. This is going to save an on photo. That's on one's proprietary format. It's going to encapsulate all that great high bit, high dynamic range into a single file that works just like any other raw photo. I can use it through the rest of my workflow. It's going to take it straight to develop so I can do more work there, but I could also use it with local adjustments and with effects and even send it off to resize, all maintaining that on photo format. So here's the photo in develop. You notice over here in the tone and color pane, it has those same slider positions that we had inside of the HDR pane. Those are all non-destructive re-editable settings. All that HDR goodness is still in there. Now, one of the things I've noticed when I worked on this photo, and this happens a lot even with HDR photos, is I'm still fighting with the tonal scale. I want to be able to get as much information in the highlights without opening up the shadows. And by using something like the shadow slider, as I bring that up, it's going to start to also lighten other parts of the image that maybe I don't want to lighten. Maybe I really want to keep those rocks super dark. And it's starting to bring up some noise in those rocks. So let me show you how you can actually combine multiple versions of the same HDR photo using different processing options. I'm just going to take that photo and I'm going to click on the copy button. It's going to make another layer of the exact same raw HDR data. Now I can use totally different settings on that one. So on this upper one up here, I'm going to adjust it so that my rocks are a nice deep dark black. I'll just grab my black slider over here and I'll just adjust those so that it darkens up those rocks a little bit. There we go. And I've got nice deep dark blacks in there. But it's also darkened other parts of the photo that I don't want. I want to bring those areas back. So watch. I'm just going to come down to the first layer down here. I'm going to open up the masking section. I'm going to make a luminosity mask. Boom, there we go. I've created that luminosity mask. I'm going to copy it and I'm just going to reset it real quick while I'm here so it's clean. We'll go up to the upper layer where we want to actually use that and I'm going to say paste. And I'm also going to now hit the invert button. And if we actually look at that mask, oops, let's change our mode to grayscale so it's a little easier to see what that mask looks like. If we look at the mask, you'll notice that the areas that are white, the areas that are going to reveal all the information, are the dark areas, which is what I want on the inverted mask. And I'm just going to now adjust the window so it's really just these darkest, darkest areas that are actually going to be affected. So watch, I'll just grab this window slider and I'll bring it all the way down until it's really just the rocks or the areas that are going to be light and are going to get that dark point adjustment added to them. There we go. Let me turn that on and off so you can see. There's before, it's a little bit flatter. Those rocks aren't quite as dark and vivid, where now I'm as able to attack just those rocks without affecting any of the rest of the photo. That's the really powerful thing. I now have two HDR photos with all their tonal range and independent adjustments for both. And in this case, I was just using a luminosity mask, but I could use any of the masking tools for it. I could actually go back to that original photo down here at the bottom and I could lighten it up even more now if I want to without having to risk actually affecting those dark areas of the rocks. There we go. That's coming along pretty cool. But you know, while I'm at it, why don't I put in a better looking sky? This is another cool thing we can do by having that HDR data and our layered engine all in the same place. We can add other photos to it. 
So I'll go up to the layer menu, say add layer from file. I'm just going to go to my extras in this case. And I'm going to go grab one of the skies that comes with Photo Raw. Let's go to the textures and then to the skies. Let me zoom down here and I'll look for one that I like until we find one that I think look good with this photo. Oh, that's a beautiful one. Nope, ah, I like this one better. I'm just going to double click. And now it's inserted that as its own layer. I can grab the move tool here. I'm just going to move and manipulate that where I want. You know, I really need to make sure that the suns line up. So I'm going to have to stretch this photo out quite a bit to do that. To make that work a little bit better, I'm just going to flip it horizontally by clicking the flip button. And now I'll just stretch it. I'm going to stretch it out a lot. So if I just come over here to the width slider, I'll put in something big like 10,000, like twice as big. There we go. We'll line it up. Eh, 10,000 might be a little much. Let's go uh, 7,000. Yeah, maybe a bit more. I can just grab it. Also stretch it out manually too. Make sure that I've got the horizon and the suns lined up. I can now change its blend mode. Let's use something a little better, maybe something like soft light. So it blends in and looks a bit more realistic. And then I can actually use the mask to blend that in. I'll just come down. We'll grab the masking tools. I'll grab the gradient mask or the masking bug. We'll stick that on there and I'll flip it around. And then I'll use the feather lines to control how quickly it graduates and is added in, just like that. So there we go. I started off with independent exposure brackets. I created an HDR photo that had the full tonal scale from the highlights to the shadows. And then I was able to create multiple renditions of that HDR by just creating another layer, just duplicating that HDR as a layer and using different non-destructive settings on it and then adding another photo to it. All as part of my complete HDR workflow, rather than having to use a separate app and then bringing it into another app to do my work. That's one of the great benefits of On One Photo Raw. It's everything you need all in a single application. Thanks for watching.